It's the e-commerce master plan podcast here to help you grow your e-commerce business faster and more efficiently by cutting through the hype to bring you inspiration and guidance from the e-commerce sector and beyond. Here's your host, Chloe Thomas. Hello, Master Plan World. Awesome to have you listening in. Welcome to the fifth podcast in our 2019 e commerce Master Plan growth series, sponsored by Omnisend, the all in one marketing automation platform that empowers e commerce marketers to boost sales with omnichannel tools. It's the third time we've done the growth series in January, bringing you double the number of episodes per week for the whole month, each one selected because it offers superb advice on how to grow your business in the coming year. We've got a very varied selection for you this year and I know you're going to find it really useful so make sure you listen to them all. There's 10 episodes in the series in total, numbers 191 to 200 and at least half of them are live as you listen to this one so no excuses for listening to those. Uh, I'm Chloe Thomas, I'm creator of the e-commerce master plan, I'm an author, speaker and advisor And I focus on solving your e-commerce marketing problems. If you have an e-commerce problem you would like my help solving, then head over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash solve to find out more. Before I introduce you to our guest, we should really hear a bit more about our sponsor, as without them, this series and specifically this episode would not be possible. Omnisend, marketing automation platform tailored for e-commerce. Omnisend provides sophisticated omnichannel marketing automation tools for sales-driven marketers that have outgrown generic email marketing platforms. Engage your customers and boost your e-commerce sales with dynamic emails, text messages, Facebook Messenger and retargeting ads on both Facebook and Google, all from just one platform. Try Omnisend for free for 14 days. Just visit omnisend.com forward slash master plan and get started. Today we're going SaaS. Yes, we're getting into the world of software as a service. That different stream of e-commerce I occasionally like to add to our podcast topics because it's always good for us to take a look outside our own business model to find some new ideas and inspiration and learn from how other people are running similar yet different types of e-commerce business. So let me introduce you to today's special guest. Retis Loris is the CEO and co-founder of Omnisend. It's an e-commerce marketing automation service service trusted by over 40,000 marketers. Last year, they undertook a major roll of the dice to enable future growth by rebranding the company. Hello, Retis. Nice to be here. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Great day. Great to have you on here today. I'm really looking forward to talking about that rebranding story. But before we get into all of that, how did you get started in e-commerce yourself? Oh, that's a great question. You know, there's, there's always a journey. So actually, I was, I was running a digital marketing agency, serving, serving customers, serving clients, doing website development, as well as Facebook, uh, Facebook ads, Facebook uh, apps used to be very popular some time ago. Uh, as well, as well as doing email marketing and, uh, like more digital marketing in general, and some of our customers were e-commerce. So that was actually the beginning, uh, beginning to uh, where I met e-commerce business, where I start, we start serving e-commerce businesses. And that's how we saw that there there are specific needs of those e-commerce businesses. And they are different uh, comparing to any other who is doing like some business and has online presence like website or just a simple uh, Facebook page, let's say as a cafe or lawyers or et cetera. And uh, yeah, I really felt in love with e-commerce as you can track almost everything there. And uh, this, 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 you know, and you can ma- measure impact as a digital marketer. So that was actually the beginning of, of my relationship with e-commerce in general. Just that, that discovery that it's so so similar yet so different. I say that's one of the reasons I am forever involved loving e-commerce because it, there's just such a clear and distinct set of things you have to do for it. Yeah, absolutely. Although attribution is still a huge challenge for any marketer, I guess, including those who are e-commerce marketers. Yeah, attribution, that's a biggie, isn't it? At least, I suppose at least we can track it which you can't in a lot of um, places, but the who deserves the credit for the sale when it comes down to the traffic. I think ever since my very first 
probably my first ever day in e-commerce, there was a question mark about whether it was the catalogue or the or the Google ads which drove the sale. And that's been the story for the last 15 years. And we still, we, we're better able to track it, but working out who wins and who deserves the credit is a whole other nightmare. Absolutely agree. And nowadays we have more channels, which makes it a little bit more complicated. I mean, it opens new horizons and uh, for acquisition, but yeah. But still, attribution remains a challenge. It does indeed. And actually, I find um, it's trickier in the lead gen world, I guess you're in my world rather than the normal e-commerce business, than it is, you know, to do that attribution than it is in the the sales, you know, selling a product side of things, simply because the, the path to purchase tends to be so much greater. Absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Yeah, especially yeah, for us, for us, it's a challenge as well, especially when uh, some of our um, acquisition, acquisition of final goes through some app stores like Shopify app store, BigCommerce app store, Magento app store, uh, et cetera, WooCommerce. So sometimes we do lose our uh, lead there uh, and then, you know, mapping them properly and then you get, get them back onto your website, onto your uh, SaaS tool. It's really challenging, but we are trying to, to solve it. Yeah, it's a uh, but it, it interests me that the the attribution I find is discussed considerably more in the e-commerce world than it is in the lead generation world, which is kind of it, it seems a more front of mind problem in e-commerce than it does in lead gen. Despite the fact in lead gen, it's probably a bigger problem. Yeah, absolutely. I'm at risk of taking us down one one serious rabbit hole there. So so let's let's crawl back out of the rabbit hole. And um, how did you get from the digital marketing agency that you were running and your initial involvement with e-commerce through to founding um, Omnisend? So back in the days, Omnisend is about to celebrate uh, fifth anniversary. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. In, in a few months, it's going to be uh, February next year. This year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone, we're recording this like three days before Black Friday. Um, and you're obviously not going to be hearing this until January. So next month, it turns five, which is very cool. Next month, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be five. Yeah, so first couple of years, uh, then we launched. Um, so the story was as follows: as we um, saw serving those e-commerce clients that uh, they have they have very specific needs for their email marketing and automation. Five years ago was not so obvious for e-commerce, and it was a privilege for large players as like Amazon or other, other corporate level players, which used to use very expensive, very very complicated, very complicated comprehensive uh, solutions and uh, so yeah the, the the idea behind behind launching soundest at that time which now is omniscient uh, was that really uh, bring this uh bring this the data driven data driven and automated marketing uh, solution to small and medium businesses and that time uh the market was relatively uh empty and no was was like focusing on e-commerce. Nowadays, it's a bit a bit more crowded market with uh, many players focusing on e-commerce. I mean, email service providers focusing on e-commerce specific needs and serving those specific needs. Focus on e-commerce was from the very very, very beginning of Omnisend. Uh, just we started like serving those really micro to small businesses at that time and bringing them capacity which were not for them before. Um, so yeah, for a first couple. Two years, yeah, two years from from the launch, we still uh, continue serving as digital marketing agency alongside with the product. But uh, after that, it took off. We saw that okay, we can focus on a, on the product solely, and this is this is the way to go. As this you know global presence and customers worldwide and different kind of businesses and SaaS model is really what I uh, felt in love as like a few years before I felt in love in e-commerce. It's so hard to run two different business models at a time, you know, the agency model and a SaaS model. So it must have been really nice the day you just got to go, just the SaaS model. Uh, yes, absolutely. I mean, it, it was um, at, at that time, like um, initial couple of years, they were not like super, super easy. Now we are growing at a at, at great rate. But initially, there were, were the challenges to, to really understand your customers' needs. So I guess the lesson which we have learned is really understanding your customers' needs is, is the core of any business. Uh, doesn't matter if you, if you are running online store or you are serving uh, those online stores as it's in our case. Yeah. So really it took us a couple of years to really understand, uh, uh who our customer is, what, what, uh, 
their needs, etc. And we're still learning. I mean, it's it's a it's a journey. It will never end. It is one of those crazy things, isn't it? You can sit at the blackboard or the whiteboard for as um for as long as you want, extrapolating who you believe your startup avatar is going to be. But then six months down the line, when you look at who your best customers actually are, they're always a little bit different. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely agree. Yeah, so uh, it's it's you know in the SaaS world, uh, really being lean is is very important. Uh, so we take this path, and while launching our new features, we do it as MVP initially, usually with a beta sign and, and launch for our early adopters. Uh, prom- Just to quickly clarify that for the listeners, MVP is minimal viable, minimum even viable product. So it's a basic version. That's correct. Strip back version for testing. That's correct. Yeah, sorry, using a little bit of slang from SaaS model, but uh, yeah, so really uh, launching a feature and and uh, and testing if our customers really need it, uh, if they need it, if uh, if the way we saw it uh, as a, as a solution for their some some of their problems or some of their challenges, if if this is the best solution, maybe maybe we got uh, the right idea and the right pain point, but the solution is not. Uh, the best we have implemented so really like a lot of adjustment a lot of a lot of uh, you know tweaking after after this minimum viable product is live i suppose that's a bit like uh, or, or the the act of hey guys hey early adopters we've got something new for you here it is if no one's lo- looked at those that functionality in the first week it's probably missed the problem i suppose which is a bit like in in the e-commerce space doing a pre-order you can pre-order this product to see if anyone actually wants to wants to, wants it and that can help you make the decision of what you build next in your case or what you buy in to sell in the case of the e-commerce business Absolutely. You know, it's something similar like uh, launching a Kickstarter campaign uh, where you sell a, a great vision uh, of the future uh, and then you present it to a market and the market decides uh, uh, either they want to believe in, in this future and this is, there is a pain point and they're willing to pay you in advance. So in, in our case, like those early adopters who are started using our features, yeah, usually we do give them something like in exchange, like free credits or not increasing the price. And they have this like early, early adopter advantage. There is, there is always an early adopter advantage uh, so, some, somehow. But yeah, but at the same time, we take a little bit of risk to really understand uh, how does it work and, and to help us in some cases to, to understand their needs better. Excellent. Hey, so, well, look, you, I mentioned in the intro that you'd done a pretty big roll of the dice in 2018, which was to rebrand your business completely from Soundest to Omnisend which is a big call to make. So um, what, what led you to the decision? Yeah, actually, yeah, we made it. And um, so uh, the fundamentals for this is really that once we, once we launched um, Soundest at that time, we really were focusing uh, to small, or let's say micro to, to micro to small, a little bit to mid-sized businesses with a promise to, to have a super easy to use email service, email marketing service. And we kept this promise as really uh, once we're analyzing our reviews, we're getting on like app stores, on GT Crowd, Captair, et cetera. And the, the keywords, the key keywords were easy and use. Those were two like completely dominated, uh, uh, com- yeah, dominating keywords. So we kind of uh, made what we uh, promised to do, uh, but at the same time we we uh, we kind of um, saw two patterns. One is that our customers, those are, who are growing, uh, they are graduating us. They are going to another another solutions which are a bit more sophisticated, which are a bit more, at the same a little bit more complicated, but they kind of provide a better variety of features and better capabilities to really do a sophisticated automation, etc. Uh, it's one thing. And the second thing, which is a really fundamental shift, which is happening, and we strongly believe that it will change the retail in general, uh, it's going on the channel. Uh, both uh, like ways you sell things. I mean, there will be no online or purely online or purely offline retail businesses uh, in five to ten years. I would say at the same time, at the same time, marketers should uh, should look at marketing uh, cross channel as well. I mean, use this omni channel thing that uh, you should reach your customers with the channels they want to be reached. So 
adding to email marketing, adding like text messages, adding push notifications, adding uh, uh, Facebook Messenger and other messengers in the future. So that was actually the vision that we should enable those omnichannel businesses, omnichannel retail businesses to do omnichannel marketing. You know, we saw those two things that we should a little bit refocus what our ideal customer is, what persona is, uh, at the same time really to... Um, to go after this fundamental shift, which is which is happening uh, now, and we believe uh, will be happening in the coming five to ten years. So I know I know many of our listeners have probably had those days where they've gone, "Oh my god, we've only been selling earrings, and the customers want necklaces, so we'll start selling necklaces again." Which is a bit a bit like the same thing thing you've been from, but they've they've shied away from doing the whole rebrand. So what was it after going right? We need to update the vision for the next five, 10 years, we need to listen to our customers. What then made you feel the need to to rebrand as a result of that process? Yeah, that's really like good question. So one thing is really long-term vision. And then I think, because, you know, at that time, we were not sure that the new name going to be Omniset. Um, but just we felt that sound as doesn't really reflect uh, what are we doing uh, now already and uh, what are we planning to do in upcoming uh, five to 10 years, which if we're talking about like 10 years perspective, it's quite long, long term. So having a better name, which better reflects what are you doing, we thought that it's going to be a really valuable move, uh, which now after one year, I, I really can confirm that was a good decision. Although uh, going through this rebranding processes, there, there were days or nights when they thought, okay, why, why are we doing this? So let's let's dive into that a little bit then. I suppose let me rather than than saying tell me the horror stories. Um, are, for anyone out there who's thinking it's time to rebrand, because often we do we do give our businesses one name at the beginning, and then it turns out not to be the best name, and we want want to revise it. Have you got any advice for someone who's thinking about going through that process that might help them make the implementation that little bit less stressful? Mm, no, in this case, no. <laughs> We've got a lot of um, like advice from our existing customers, uh, but yeah, mainly by for choosing a name, uh, just uh, testing our our names and then the picks we we made uh, from the shortlist. Uh, but yeah, but not not the process. So sometimes it's better not to know uh, uh, not to know things uh, before before starting. <laughs> because once you dive in, you have no other option. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta go for it. I like that. I like that. You want just make the right decision and then just wade through it all so you so just to, to go back there you said something really interesting which is to choose the new name you used customers as part of the decision making process yes that's correct so yeah so uh, so yeah the lesson just maybe another lesson just b- b- before going to this like um choosing a name uh, so uh i would say that uh, we were really happy that we didn't do it like uh too early and sit really it's really like demanding for resources, mainly human resources as well as financial resources. It's one lesson. And a second lesson, I, I would say that uh, if you kind of feel that your current name is really limiting your business, uh, so really seriously consider rebranding. As in our case, it really worked worked well, and now I'm super happy about that. Yeah, and yeah, getting back to choosing uh, choosing uh, a name, so. Yeah, so there were a few rules, a uh, few rules that one is uh, really wanted to reflect uh, what, what our vision is. So um, having words as like send or mail or automation or marketing, somehow we made a short list of, of a few words, which uh, would preferably be included into, into our name. It, it was like one thing. And yeah, second thing, it was about uh, being able to acquire a .com domain. Uh, yeah, because some of them, they cost like, you know, tons of money, tons of money. And uh, yeah, and third thing was really, which is super serious as our business is really global, uh, finding the name which is not registered as a trademark yet. And we found this is super challenging thing. Those of you who've, who've, played the game of let's try and come up with a name for the business and then try and find the domain name, we'll know how difficult that is. If you've ever tried to do it whilst bearing in mind international trademarks as well, it is a nightmare. Yeah, it is. And it's even much more uh, difficult than to find a domain. 
uh, it's like for the main, it's, it's usually if, if it's uh, free and it's, if it's for sale, so it's the matter of money. I mean, either you can afford or you cannot, but you still can negotiate. There are sometimes, there are formats where you can, you can lease a domain. Uh, there are such a services that, okay, the price is quite high, but they, they divide it into like 24 months or so and you pay it on monthly, uh, base. So there are, there are options, but with a trademark, it's, it's much more limiting because, you know, there is someone, uh, sometimes you even don't know because this is a company which is a client of some, uh, you know, a lawyer. Uh, who owns the trademark and then it's registered uh, cross country, cross continents, etc. So, um, yeah, it's 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 much more challenging even than to find a, a proper domain name. So, uh, yeah, so the lesson here and then for our e-commerce and then store owners, so it really you should define your market. I mean, if you are playing like locally in let's say U.S. market or the U.K. market or so, so maybe that's that's enough for you to to register your trademark like locally. Uh, but if you really, uh, if you are really willing to trade worldwide, so really worth considering registered uh, in different locations. Yes, and then that whole process, which I think we're probably best off not getting into, but that's another very long-winded process as well. Um, getting getting your way through that, I think. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not even going to go there. Uh, we're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna, Chloe, bench that. Move on. <laughs> 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 yeah, sometimes you know, sometimes you shouldn't go through that process if if um, you're selling some some unique unique uh, like if you're a designer and you're designing like let's say clothing by yourself and uh, so maybe that's that's absolutely okay with having not registered trademark if you own like domain and uh, afterwards if something happens you can you can prove that uh, that you know it's you who really started this business under this name and then that's perfectly fine I guess. You know, even the the choosing of the name is complex and time consuming and all the rest of it. But then implementing that change um, is it's it's you know it's moving all the websites and the, you will bef- if anyone's thinking of doing a, a rebranding exercise, as Rita says, don't just do it on a whim. <laughs> you know, ba- make sure that your name really is limiting you, as Rita said, and. And then I always think um, it's worth just before you you push the button on even the uh, the idea generation, just make a list of everywhere that brand name exists. Absolutely agree. Just to bear in mind the huge quantity of work you've got to fix that on everything that's that's connected to the business, because it's not you know in the old days if you wanted to change the name of your physical retail store you could just put up a new sign pretty much it's a somewhat more complex than that these days yeah absolutely and uh, we a part of our uh, experience uh, uh, with a name change we we kind of saw some of our customers uh, going through this rebranding process uh, or moving a platform uh, e-commerce platform so it's it's a Quite similar, I would say, that moving, uh, yeah, migrating from one platform to another is really challenging as well. And the SEO, especially for e-commerce, it's it's crucial here uh, to really properly make uh, all the redirects and not to lose something, um, not to lose something for like, you know, like technical SEO part is like super, super important. And especially if you, if you have a lot of SKUs, a lot of products, which was not like super difficult in our case as we had like relatively limited in amount of of uh, of pages and uh and uh, our website so you, any online store have like you know a lot a lot much more than us uh did but still like uh, seo part is like super important and both technical and offside seo really as you have mentioned finding where you have been mentioned previously and really contacting those resources asking to uh to change your name which is not that easy sometimes. No, and it, it's often as well, it's a project that then grows. So it's like, oh, the product packaging needs new needs to have the branding change. Well, let's just redesign the product packaging whilst we're doing that. And then it's like, oh, and we've got to rebrand the website and the, the logo's actually gone from red to blue. So we better do the whole, oh, well, let's just shift platform at the same time. And all of a sudden you've, you've kind of thrown the entire business up in the air and watched it fall down. So I think... There has to be a, you know, you have to be a bit careful about what you agree to include in the rebranding process. Did you find that was a bit of a challenge? Yeah, that uh, that was 
that was definitely and uh, as you said it it was a like uh, growing constantly growing project uh, every day it became bigger and bigger um but just after after we ran it uh, started becoming smaller as uh, uh the day when we changed the name it was not um the end of the process it was just some intermediate uh, uh, pit stop i would call it and yeah and afterwards the project continued like really replacing all 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 the backlinks trying to replace them and even like some legacy technical legacy things you should like uh, do it uh, as well after so it took us at least like half a year, even, even a little bit more to really finalize this rebranding process. After the like name was changed and the domain was changed and the logo was changed. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's a process. And then the whole work starts again, telling the customers, this is the new name. This is why we've changed it. Because of course, the why is what they really care about because that's, you know, the whole catalyst for this whole process was them and why you decided to make the shift and then explain to them why you made the shift, why it's great for them and all the rest of it, as well as just making sure they've realized they actually open your communications is a whole other project in and of itself. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and you know, explaining your, for your current customers as well as, 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 as going after, after new customers. And after rebranding, you have a new message a little bit Okay, sometimes maybe you can keep the same message. In our case, we uh, we really um, change messaging and our USP going from from really like easiness uh, of use, which is still really is the case. We are building our product to be it like super easy to use for anyone. But just one thing, uh, really enabling those uh, smart marketers to 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 do uh, great things for their online online stores and their online businesses. Uh, but yeah, the positioning is really from like easiness of use and from like micro businesses to, uh, from the merchants who are usually like soul, soul man, um, soul man show and soul man like business, uh, going, going to, uh, midsize and, and larger companies with marketing teams and marketers, et cetera. So really repositioning at, uh, you always have still this legacy positioning. Um, when you talk to a new process, Active customer, let's say, and you you explain your new positioning, but sometimes online we can still find your old positioning somewhere, you know, in some legacy article, in some podcast, etc. And yeah, so this is uh, where you uh, have a challenge to explain them why why is it so? What has changed here? Yeah, and, and at, at least in your case, the previous positioning very much supports the new positioning, but. There are times when a rebrand can be from pointing east to pointing west <laughs> instead, and that's uh, that's a whole other thing. But let's let's not go into that. Instead, let's head into the top tips round. And here is a reminder of our sponsor, OmniSend, the marketing automation platform tailored for e-commerce. OmniSend provides sophisticated omnichannel marketing automation tools for sales-driven marketers that have outgrown generic email marketing platforms. Engage your customers and boost your e-commerce sales with dynamic emails, text messages, Facebook Messenger and retargeting ads on both Facebook and Google, all from one platform. Try OmniSend for free for 14 days. Just visit omnisend.com forward slash master plan and get started. Okay, as you all know, I love the top tips round because it gives all of us some really quick ideas for taking our businesses to the next level. So Retis, first up, the book top tip. If everyone listening to this podcast agreed to take Friday off and read a book to make their business better, which book would you recommend? It's uh, hard things. Um, It's hard thing about hard things. It's really not about e-commerce, uh, but about the mindset in general. Although it's it's uh, it's it's by Ben Horowitz. It's, it's really about the situations that you, some some of us would give up, but just never give up and really be creative and find the ways as there's always a way to to do that. And the best I like about this book is really that a lot of uh, management books or like self uh, self improvement books etc they always talking uh, success stories but uh, very few of them are talking about failures and the uh, failures they do exist in our lives in our businesses and it's really really part of a journey which should be taking i mean you cannot uh, shortcut in this case you have to make a certain amount of failures to get into success yeah so that's a book about about failures and uh, therefore i really like it i mean feeling just a human and you know 
Given how often we all say you learn more from your, or many of us say, you learn more from your failures than you do from your successes, it is surprising how few books there are out there that actually talk about the failures. <laughs> Absolutely, because, you know, the uh, history is written by, by winners. So uh, once you become a winner, I guess you just forget about your uh, failures. Let's move on to the traffic top tip. Which marketing method do you either prize above all others or think doesn't get the press it deserves? Uh, marketing method. So I, I would say like, um, text messages as a channel, uh, it's really, it's really start getting traction again, SMS, uh, as a channel, it used to, it used to be quite popular and then email really, uh, really made them not, uh, not that popular anymore. And like, uh, now then, uh, smartphone is, is a default as a, as a phone and really text messages means became, became, uh, as any other messaging, uh, solution with the links, with, uh, clickable links, with unsubscribe options, etc. So, uh, I really, I really feel and see the renaissance of, uh, SMSs. Okay. I'll have to keep an eye out for that one this year then. Uh, the tool top tip, maybe a collaboration tool, a social media plug in a phone app, or just a way of working. Is there a cool little tool you use that makes you and your team more efficient from day to day? Mm, buffer, I would say. The social media sharing service. Yeah. Social media sharing. Yeah. Mm. Okay, then growth top tip. If you met someone today who's focused on growing their e-commerce business from 100 orders per month to 1000, what would be your number one tip for them? Just, you know, do, do things, <laughs> be, uh, be passionate about what, uh, what you're doing and, and never, never give up. Um, uh, and yeah, try, try different things. And so, so that's, yeah, would be kind of a broader tip. And uh, if we're talking about marketing, well, feel we are, so really start doing omnichannel uh, marketing, uh, earlier than, than later. Excellent advice. Well, Master Plan World, you can find all those top tips and links to everything else we've been chatting about in today's episode by heading over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast, where you'll see a link to this show. Rita, before we say goodbye, could you remind the listeners of where they can find you and Omnisend on the web and social media, please? Yeah, sure. So the best thing to find is really our website. Go to www.omnisend.com. Uh, Omnisend is the name for Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and uh, Pinterest, Instagram, etc. So you name your preferred social media. And as well as app stores, if you are using like particular e-commerce platforms, Shopify, BigCommerce, Magento, WooCommerce, or PrestaShop. So we can find on there uh, how the, they call it app stores, plugin stores, uh, add-on stores. So we are there. So it's really, really seamless that you can just install the plugin or the app and your store will be connected with Omnisend just in a minute. Excellent. Well, I'll add links to all of that and everything else we talked about today in the show notes. Master Plan World, you can find those at ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast, or just go to the website, click on the podcast tab or use the search box. Rita, thank you so much for being on the Ecommerce Master Plan podcast today. It's been really interesting hearing about your rebranding journey. So thank you very much. Thank you, Claude. It's been a pleasure to attend your podcast. Thank you. So I hope you all enjoyed that skip and a hop into the world of SaaS, into also understanding a bit more about the pros and cons of a rebranding experience. And I really love the way that Rita said, if your current brand is limiting your business, then it's time to change it. I think that's quite a nice litmus test for working out, should I rebrand or not? Is it limiting your business or is it just something you quite fancy changing? Because as I think we discussed, the complexity and the levels of the rebranding process are complex. Picking the name and dealing with domain issues and trademarking issues to try and find the right one, that can really sap your creativity when everything you come up with, you can't get the .com. Likewise, you then have oh my gosh, where are all the places where our brand is? So many places, which then of course leads you to actually look in those places and realise, gosh, that needs an update. And then you skip on to um, to actually making the change and conveying the message to everyone. It's not a project to take on lightly, but it can make great and positive impacts to your business. This has been the fifth episode from our 2019 e-commerce master plan growth series sponsored by Omnisend, the all-in-one marketing automation platform that empowers e-commerce marketers to boost sales with omnichannel tools. There's 10 episodes in total, so make sure you check them all out by heading over to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash podcast. 
Now, the whole point of this series is to help you grow your business in 2019. And that's also the point of the virtual summit we ran back in September. If you miss that, there's still time to get involved. It's over 20 expert video sessions, and in each you'll learn about a different way to improve your marketing and grow your business. Think of it like a conference that you can tap into whenever you want from wherever you want. There's a very special offer on the Virtual Summit just for you podcast listeners. Get it by going to ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash summit 176. That's ecommercemasterplan.com forward slash summit 176. Have a great week and keep optimizing. Thank you for listening to the Ecommerce Master Plan podcast. Find out more at ecommercemasterplan.com.